there we go. Isn't this beautiful? People in the room, welcome. People online, welcome. This is quite a new thing for us to be doing, and we're so glad that we're able to do it this way. We wish that we're all together, and we know that that day will come too, right? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And I just feel like the Holy Spirit was doing something really special in that, that moment where we're all together again. There was a sweet sense of God's presence, right? And so I just want you to tune in right now, particularly for those in the room, but also those that are live stream. Was there anything that God was highlighting for you? Because at the end of this little message here that we're going to be doing, we're going to have time for ministry. And so I just don't want you to lose that. And those that are on the stream, if there's something that God's been highlighting during worship, please fill it in, in the con on the contacts uh, comments. <laughs> and we will also follow that up at the end of the message. Part of this is just trying to get a new routine and a rhythm so that we're being inclusive. So it's going to feel a little bit clunky maybe for you, for me as well. And I'm glad that we can just all have lots of grace at this moment, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's been quite a journey. August was the last time we were here together. And quite a journey in between, right? Lots, lots of waves, lots of quiet moments and lots of storm around us as well. So it's just so great to be able to come back, see your faces, look into your eyes and also online knowing that that's going to happen as well for you. And so I just wanted to start today with um, just sharing a message that's on my heart that I think is for this season that God's opening up as we travel in our locales. Now today we have, for those on stream, we have Croydon. Let's hear it for Croydon. <laughs> you don't have to be really loud. Let's hear it for Chenside Park. Yeah, there we go, warming up now. And we also have Lilydale. <laughs> yeah. So for this little group, they are buzzing. And I'm sure that next week, that when, when they're able to do stuff during the week, they'll also be able to just tap each other on the shoulder and say, let's get this locale together and let's continue to worship. So the first slide here, have you noticed that we have a new word that we're using, locale? Some of you are using locale, that's okay. Locale is simply your place. It's your home. It's your area. It's a place where something happens. Say that with me. It's a place where something happens. And because you're there, you're noticing what's happening in your locale. It's the power of place. It's the power of having, as Eugene Peterson says, a theology is always rooted in geography. So wherever you are, you are living out something and the Lord is living it out through you and through the people around you. And so today we're going to be looking at just what is it to be following the Holy Spirit in your physical setting and also what is it for him to be leading us into this new season. Now, just put your thumbs up. Is there something on the screen behind me? Yeah, we are operating well. Well done, team. Thank you. If you've got um, anything that's a device or a Bible kind of thing, let's open it up to John 14. And we're going to look at John 14 to 16, but we're going to kind of scoot over some of the, the verses that the Holy Spirit's wanting to speak into today. So Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you that John recorded these words for us for 2021 to be so relevant and full of life. And we ask that as we read them, that we would be just so aware that you, the word, are here at present teaching us today. In your name, we ask for your presence to just continue to lead us. Amen. John 14, chapter 1. I love the first way, the start of this uh, conversation that Jesus has with his disciples. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Chapter 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And then he starts to tell them what he's up to. He says, in verse 2, in my father's house are many rooms. That actually means home in Greek. There are many rooms that are home. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may also be. Jump down to verse 16. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him. 
for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And then jump down to verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you and peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Here it is again. Let not your hearts be troubled. So today we're looking at what is it to have God with us? We're heading towards Christmas and we're also aware that what does it mean for God to be with us in this time? And today's topic and focus is going to be, Lord, send your spirit, just as Jesus promised. Turn over to John chapter 16, verse 6, Jesus says, Remember, he's saying, if I'm going, I'm going to send another to you. And this is what he says. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I will tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So we are going to start a conversation of what is it to have the helper sent to us at this time. The living God, Jesus, invites us into a relationship and he's always preparing us for something different. And he was doing that here with the disciples, right? He was telling them something's about to change. I'm about to leave and you're about to receive another. Now, he did that in a number of different ways. Remember when they had to learn how to approach him, how to worship him as the ascended Jesus. And for 40 days, they were like, what the heck? It's changed. Our relationship has changed. I don't quite know how to relate to you, Jesus. And he came in those 40 days and appeared after he was resurrected and something had changed. And remember also that we are being called into a space of following him as well. Well, one day we're all going to follow him in a new way, face to face with him in a new creation that he is already establishing on earth and a new earth. So this space that we now follow him in 2021 is marked by the absence of his physical presence, right? And Jesus is talking to people in the, and the disciples in John 14 to 16, warning them that something else is going to happen in terms of his presence, in terms of the presence of God being with us. And so the amazing thing is Jesus says, it's to your advantage that I go away. Now that is doing my head in. Is it doing your head in? Can you imagine how the disciples were feeling? How can that possibly be to our advantage? Here they are having an amazing time where he's washed their feet. This is the last supper. And he turns to them and calls them little children, which is so tender. But he says, I'm only going to be with you for a little while longer. I'm only going to be with you because I'm going away and then I'm going back to the one who sent me. Can you imagine them trying to get their heads around that? Imagine us trying to get our heads around not being together right now, not having a physical presence of his body right now. We're only getting a taste of it again. But for the rest of the evening in John 14 to 16, Jesus is saying, you will go on living And it's going to be for your advantage that I am not going to be with you. I'm sending another. Let not your hearts be troubled. The very first thing he wants to do is speak to our heart. He's doing that today. The first thing he wants to do is say, don't be troubled. You know, that word troubled actually means to shudder and to be thrown into confusion. Has your heart had any of that experience lately? (laughs) Maybe, yeah, shudder and thrown into confusion. Don't be troubled as he's addressing that exact thing that they were feeling, we are also experiencing. Because for three years, they had the privilege, three wonderful years of enjoying the company of Jesus. For three years, they had the visible and the audible and the tangible presence, right, of his company, his companionship, his leadership, his close, intimate friendship. And they were learning now that when they're with Jesus, they feel so secure. When they're with Jesus, they feel full of hope. When they're with Jesus, they experience not being afraid. 
When they're with Jesus, they feel deeply loved and unconditionally so. That's our experience too. But he's not here in his physical presence. We are experiencing that through his spirit. Their hearts shuddered with fear. We also can experience that. And he's speaking to that and saying, don't be troubled. You're not going to be left alone. You're not going to be orphans. You're not going to have to fear that. Has anyone ever felt that, experienced that? Fear of being alone <laughs> while we're in lockdown? Fear of being abandoned? Is anyone going to remember who I am? Oh my gosh, Jesus, are you there? <laughs> but really, he surprised them even more in John 16 when he says, this is to your advantage that I go away. It's for your good that I go away. How can that possibly be? How can it be to your advantage? Your advantage, that means that it's going to be for your benefit. That means that something favourable is going to happen. It's going to be for your success that Jesus is no longer with them. That's what he's saying to them. Being apart from Jesus, can it be an advantage? With COVID restrictions, has it felt like an advantage not to be in the physical presence of your loved ones? It doesn't feel good. Can you imagine how they're feeling? And then he says, I'm sending the counsellor. I'm sending the helper. And so that's what we're going to quickly look at today. We're going to look at the paraclete. That's the, that's the Greek word for this word, counsellor, helper. It is actually a word that is pretty tricky to uh, interpret. And so throughout the um, Bible translations, the first NIV and RSV, they, they say counsellor when they, when they read and interpreted paraclete. The King James said comforter. Same word, that's how they translated it. Um, other versions said advocate, which brought in another whole legal part of it. The New American Standard said helper. Some of you might have that in your Bibles. And then in 1960, there was a paraphrase from J.B. Phillips, and he said, someone to stand by you, which is kind of a mouthful, isn't it? Someone to stand by you, but it's actually someone to stand by you, and literally it means someone called to come alongside you. Para, you know that from paramedic, people that come alongside, paralegal, and then kalitos, called in so it's called in to come alongside someone called in to come alongside which is going to be for our advantage and that paracle paracleo is actually a verb that says and imagine is this how you're experiencing the paracletus is this how you're experiencing the holy spirit call in send for exhort encourage comfort strengthen Console, convict, convince. Oh, how we need his presence right now, right? In the upper room, Jesus is saying, this is going to be to your advantage. This is going to be to your good that I go away physically. Now, there's a whole lot of story in between that. But can it really get any better than the physical Jesus being with us? Can it really get any better than his tangible presence with us? Turn again to um, John chapter 14, verse 16 to 18. We're just going to unpack five things that are really life-changing verses if we're living them and if we're receiving them as, oh my gosh, that is exactly how it is. John 14, verse 16. Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another paraclete and he may be with you forever." That is the spirit of truth whom the world can't receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides in you and he will be in you. Sorry, he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So focusing on those two verses, the first thing is we see that the paraclete, the counsellor, is a person right? And that's why we know it's not just that we're welcoming this, this out there force. We're saying he's a person, Holy Spirit. He's a person that we use um, a personal pronoun, he, 
rather than it. You know, have you been in situations where you're like, oh, someone's calling the Holy Spirit it. He's actually a person. <laughs> and so we, we welcome him as a person. And if you look in the book of Acts, you can see his personality through the church, through the story of the church. We can see that the Spirit speaks, which I think he was doing today for many of you and highlighting different people and the spirit of prophecy I think was here I could feel the encouragement bursting out of some of your hearts that the Lord was speaking the spirit was speaking to some of you and we're going to hear some of that in a moment the spirit also can be lied to he's a person that can be lied to and it sees we see in Acts that he can also be tempted he can bear witness he's a person that can be resisted He's a person that sends and gives orders. If you read through Acts, we see all these parts of the Spirit's personhood showing up. And if you read through the New Testament letters, there's also so many clues about the person of the Holy Spirit. He, the paraclete, searches our hearts. There it is again. He's so in tune with our hearts. He also teaches. He leads. He's a person who speaks. He's a person who also comes close. He groans. Where does that come from? He groans, Romans 8, right? He groans with us and he can be grieved. That's how personal he is. The second part that I just want to focus on today is that the Holy Spirit is also of another kind. If you see there, Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another paraclete. Another paraclete. Another if there's another, that means that there must have been someone else that is like him. Alon is the Greek word of same kind. So another means he's the same kind. He's not different. He's the same kind. He's Alon Parakletion. He's another of the same kind, not a different kind. And so the question is, who is the first paraclete if there's another? Who do you think it is? Jesus, Jesus himself was the first paraclete. He was the first one that came as comforter, counsellor. He was the first one that came as advocate. He's the first one that came and part of who he is is paraclete. He was the first and he's sending another. And because this tells us that the person and the work of the spirit cannot be separated from the person and the work of Jesus which is why Jesus can say to his disciples that night, you know him. Hmm. The another paraclete has arrived, but he's been abiding with Jesus all this time. You know him, the spirit that descended upon Jesus in baptism. You know him, the spirit that led Jesus out into the wilderness for 40 days. You know him, the spirit who enabled him to preach the gospel in the way that he did. You know him, the spirit, Jesus Christ, who cast out demons through the spirit of God. As long as they have been with Jesus, they have been with the paraclete already and they know him. Guess what? It's the same for us. That is the heart of the matter, that just because God, Jesus went away, he left another that came after him, that was already present, that already was active, that already was working through the ministry of Jesus. I will not leave you as orphans, he says, I will come to you. It's so interesting right now that there's a lot of people waiting for the second coming of Jesus, right? Have you heard a lot of people that are really leaning into that? And our answer is, guess what? The paraclete is here right now. <laughs> like, don't just keep looking to the skies. He's actually here with us through the power of his spirit. John 14, 23 says, those who love me and keep my word, my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home in them. The God who dwells with us is in us. And the God who is in us is the father, the son and the Holy Spirit third thing is just we highlighting out of those two verses that I will ask the father says Jesus and he will give you another paraclete to be with you with you forever this has brought so much comfort to me recently but it's particularly important for us right now 
that Jesus was restricted by geography and by schedule when he was here walking the earth, right? He had place and he had time. <laughs> he wasn't at two places at once when he was here as, his, as a human, divine human. And yet, because we have another coming with us who's with us forever, all of a sudden, this limitation of time and space is no longer the same. It's for our advantage that the spirit as paraclete is with us. There's no barriers anymore. There's no barriers on space or time. Can you see how that's an advantage for the kingdom coming in the new earth being sent out through us and through the spirit that is in us. There's no barriers of space or time. And in fact, there's nothing preventing any disciple from close, intimate relationship with Jesus and with him, the paraclete. So in your town, in your, lo your locale, in your home, whether you're here right now or whether you're at home watching or wherever you're going to be watching this from, there is a paraclete that is with you forever. You can't go anywhere else. Now, all this is stuff that we know, but if we are aware of how that is empowering us in this season, I just think that the, the paraclete coming to us, coming with us and being with us forever is a message that's needed right now, not just for us, but for those around us. The paraclete comes, fills Jesus, fulfills Jesus' promise that I am with you forever. Fourth thing, he's in you. So beautiful that, that he chose to dwell in us and make his home in us. I will ask the Father and he will give you another paraclete who will be with you and who will be in you. In you. It's better because the disciples find, disciples find a relationship with Jesus that is even closer than the relationship they had with Jesus because his spirit's in you. If you belong to Jesus, then another person lives in you. <laughs> you cannot get any closer than that. How privileged are we to have the Holy of Holies living in us? I'm actually looking online as well as here at the most sacred, holy places on earth. It's you, Holy Spirit in you. The places your feet go are also becoming holy because your Holy Spirit is in you. The places your hands and your heart goes is where the Holy Spirit is going through you. The God who is present comes to be the God who is experienced. If he's in us, the question then is, what is he doing while he's in us? What's the effect of having the Holy Spirit? Now, a lot of this we all know, and I'm reminding us because it's the fresh, fresh thing that I think God wants to do with us today. He's wanting to say the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of truth is needed right now. Holiness is needed right now. Truth is needed right now. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes as comforter, he comes and he comforts us, right? So I love that about who he is. But he also comes to disturb us. Have you ever been disturbed by the Holy Spirit? You know, that's that saying where it says he comes to comfort the disturbed and to, do, to disturb the comfortable, right? Has anyone ever experienced the disruption and the disturbance that comes with the Holy God within us? It's not comfortable, is it? But it's welcome because we know we are being transformed. This holy discontent, which I know I've experienced, particularly in this last 18 months, I wonder if you have as well, a discontent, but it's been stirred by the paraclete, the Holy Spirit in you. And he's doing that not because we have to do anything more. He's doing that because he wants to do something through you. And the spirit of truth, Jesus came releasing the spirit of truth to us he came that the holy spirit would be teaching us and guiding us into all truth and even right now i know that some of you are being taught and guided by him much better than i am right now <laughs> and i'm so relieved about that because he's the one that is going to guide us into all truth 
He's the one, and it's a great relief that he dwells in us. He teaches us and teaches us the truth. He teaches us the truth about ourselves, about our locale, about our ho homes and households. He teaches us about the world and relationships. He is the teacher that is in residence with you. You have the best tutor. You have the best theologian living inside of you. The paraclete comes to us and begins to unfold the truth. You know how Jesus said to the disciples, there's more I need to tell you, but you can't bear it right now. I'll tell you later. And so he sends the Holy Spirit that is actually unraveling stuff for us as we go into our relationship with him over years and sometimes in moments. He slowly, like an onion, unpeels truth. And that's why sometimes we go, you know what, I think differently about the way I used to think about something that I thought towards Jesus, towards theology, towards doctrine. We can actually grow because we have an unpeeling happening. And uh, C.S. Lewis calls it, the further in you go, the bigger the onion gets, the more the layers you find until you discover that the inside is greater than the outside. Does that, it's, that just so resonates to me. <laughs> it's just like, oh, more layers. Oh, my gosh, more things to find. The paraclete is the one that's leading us and leading you individually into that. And we are in living in, in such great times of confusion right now and uncertainty. And so you can rest in confidence that you are being taught and guided by the one that Jesus sent for this moment for you. The spirit of truth in us is going to help us get through all these cross currents that we're experiencing right now. And he's guiding us through all the complexities. And if I'm to bring it home right now for our message today, I'm going to get really close now. Are you ready? First of all, in your workplaces. Those of you that are doing your day-to-day -day living in workplaces, he is helping us in our workplaces in our workplaces where we might find ourselves feeling like, oh, something's just a little bit off. It might be feeling like something's not quite squaring up. It might feel like something's off center. You can't quite put your finger on it, or maybe you can, and it's because the spirit of truth is in us, helping us to understand what we are dealing with and what's going on in our workplaces. And I know I'm feeling the weight of that because I know that's the reality for some of us here today. In our family lives, let's bring that closer too. How is it that in our family lives we are being guided and helped by the paraclete, the spirit with us? In our family system, it can be so confusing, can't it? We often feel something again is a little bit off-center with perhaps our family relationships. We feel like we're being pulled around emotionally perhaps or manipulated or we're not quite sure what's going on can't quite put our finger on it but we have the spirit of truth who's going to guide us heal us unravel any lies unravel anything that is needing healing in our families let's get a little closer our hearts where we started let not your hearts be troubled in our own hearts and into our own hearts comes the spirit of truth and holiness when we feel something's a little bit off, when we feel like something's a little bit out of context or off-center, it's like Jeremiah says, he laments, oh, the heart is so deceitful. It's who can understand it, right? <laughs> and the paraclete is the one who understands our heart. He sees through all the games that we play. He sees through all the twisting of words that we might bring, the spin doctoring that our hearts might be used to. He sees it, he's in us, and he's leading us into freedom. It's the paraclete that loves Jesus who is the truth. So today... We're in a moment going to go off live stream and we're going to have some ministry time. And I just really um, want to have every person that arrives in this building over the next few weeks to be able to receive prayer and give encouragement and to receive ministry from the Holy Spirit. 
For those of you that are online, we are saying we can't wait to see you. We can't wait to be a part of this. You're going to actually have some other testimonies that are coming online in a moment. And we've got the team about to send you off with that. So before we go, we, we're going to have everyone here say a good, big goodbye to those online. Bye. <laughs> see you. Hi, church family. It's Nicolette and Stephen here. Um, we were asked to just share about a little... Um, story that we have to share from this week. Um, so we've been in um, quarantine since the 18th of October and today is the 26th and um, I think it was yesterday wasn't it? Yesterday yeah. um, I just got a bit of a hankering for jam donuts <laughs> and um, I know how much Stephen loves his coffee so. Desperate um, for coffee. Yeah he's desperate for coffee. Um, so I just thought, oh, well, what a novel idea. I'll put it out on the Yarra Valley Facebook page and, um, and, um, see if anyone's passing through and can be bothered grabbing us a coffee and some donuts. So I did so and the response was absolutely overwhelming. Um, it, I think that people are just wanting for connection and we were just so overwhelmed. Anyway, we could have ended up with about three dozen donuts and six coffees, but Hey, we just settled for one coffee and six jam donuts. <laughs> and um, anyway, the lovely lady that came out, we, we didn't know any of these people that offered, they were all strangers. And she um, she was very quick on the buzzer. <laughs> pick me, pick me. And um, yeah, she was on her way. She lives in Wandon and just um, dropped off our coffee and donuts. But um, had, we had a chat through the window. We were on the inside. She was obviously on the outside. And um, she, yeah, she was just saying, about getting a really lovely vibe of our house and how we've got the same angel statue out the front. And um, she also said that, um, she shared a bit about her story and that she'd, um, yeah, just in the workplace, she'd, last year she'd suffered a bit of stress and she's off work. And yeah, I just got this feeling that, you know, maybe she needed a bit of a connection with the community. And I did say, look, we are moving, but um, I'd love to catch up for a coffee if you like. She goes, oh, I'd love to. So we've been in contact since and we're still in quarantine, but we, we will go and we will um, buy her a coffee this time <laughs> and um, just share a bit of love. So yeah, what turned out to be a blessing for us was actually more of a blessing for her by the sounds of it. So just want to encourage you. God is big. He's so big and he knows our needs, but there are other people with so many more needs and you just never know mm. um, how you're going to touch someone. Yeah. All right, have a great week. Miss you guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, YVV, it's Beth here um, and Harley in the back. Yeah, we've just been for a walk on the trail this morning and um, yeah, beautiful day. Um, yeah, I think lockdown for, for us, um, I really like the quieter pace. Of, um, yeah, not sort of having to be anywhere or um, uh, do do too much uh, but one thing we've really enjoyed is is our walks and um, yeah sometimes we meet with a friend on the trail and and that's been um, a good way to catch up with um, with people um, through through these last few months um, yeah and one one day in particular um, um, I happened to um, get on the trail um, at the exact same time as as another girl I know or I know of um, didn't really um, didn't really know her too well but um we sort of got on the trail at the same time um and yeah just started walking along with the dogs and and had a lovely chat and she's a christian as well and uh yeah it was just it's since then that's just we've just struck up this really great friendship and and it came at a really um um sort of timely time for me um I think it was a really God planned moment um, as I've found out since that um, it was for her as well. So yeah, I hope that encourages you. That's um, been um, yeah, a really, a really great thing for me. And um, yeah, that's, I hope that encourages you and yeah, looking forward to seeing everybody in a few weeks at, at church and, and um, seeing you all again. Thanks guys. Bye.